is on page 38 in the front of the record. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come in the presence of God who created us to love him and serve him as, our dear, as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Now to chant with me Psalm 67, found on page 91 in front of the Red. <laughs> Thank you. 
Epistle lesson is recorded for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at the 12th verse. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? <coughs> Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside of his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said to me, you are my servant in whom I will display my splendor. Hallelujah.
mercy and peace are yours, God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As was mentioned, the word of God for our meditation is taken from the epistle of St. John, reading from the first chapter. Dear friends in Christ, do you have something on your mind today that is bothering you? A part or a side from rather frigid conditions outside. I wouldn't be surprised if you do. I wouldn't be surprised. Life is hard. Things can be difficult at times. We are presented every day with cares and, and concerns. Maybe it's something that you did. Maybe it's something you forgot to do. Maybe it's something that happened a long time ago. Maybe it's something that's in the near offing. And you're, you don't want to have to do it. It's weighing heavy on your heart. So I ask, when our minds are burdened and our hearts are heavy, where do we turn for security? Where can we find that stake in the ground, that anchor that holds us down when everything around us seems to be going crazy? The winds of adversity blowing here and there. Where do we turn? I'll tell you, in the message of Epiphany, come and see, come and see, that is what Philip told Nathaniel, come and see. Remember that Epiphany, in this Epiphany season, we clearly see that Jesus came to be the Savior of all people. Not just the Jews, but he came to be the Savior of everyone in this world. But this morning, I don't want you to get hung up on that big number. I want you to know that Epiphany also shows us that Jesus came to be our Savior. That he called each one of us by name, and he knows us. I sometimes think we don't think enough about our baptism. That is why Luther says we should always remember our baptism every day. Because it was on that day when your name was spoken and that water was applied and that sign of the cross was made on your head and on your heart. Jesus spoke your name. And he said, you're mine. You're mine. As much as Jesus came for everybody, he came for me. And I want you to get a little selfish today. And I want you to think about that. That Jesus came for me. And today he says, come and see. Come and see. The one that came to us in love. The one that we confess with confidence. And the one, my friends, that's going to lead us to heaven. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We know those words. We've heard those words. Those are the words of John the Baptist, right? Those are the words that John used to tell people that that promised Messiah was here. With those words, Jesus now begins his three-year earthly ministry. John had been urging the people to repent because the kingdom of God was near. And now he says, it's here, it's here, in that man, Jesus. He had been promising, he's coming. He had been speaking to Jews and Gentiles alike and to anyone that would listen to him. And when he saw Jesus, he announced that he was that Lamb of God. The one that stood in the Jordan River with sinners that he came to save. The one baptized by John was the one. Come and see. 
John's work as the forerunner to the Messiah was coming to a close. Jesus now was going to step up and begin his earthly ministry of, of teaching and preaching. And Jesus begins by calling his disciples. First, it was Andrew and Peter, those fishermen from Bethsaida. Then he goes and he finds Philip, and he tells Philip, follow me. Do you notice, Philip didn't find him. He went out and looked for and found Philip. Jesus didn't have to do that. He didn't need Philip to fulfill what the Father had called him to do, to come to this world, to live and die. He didn't need Philip. He didn't need the other disciples to accomplish what he needed to do, to, to perform the miracles that would manifest or show him or his epiphany as the true God. He didn't need them. The Father had called him had appointed him, had sent him to come to this earth, to live the life we couldn't live, to die the death we deserved. I think that would have been enough. Wouldn't that be enough? But what does Jesus do? He's personally concerned about an individual soul. And so he goes to him and he says, come, follow me to be sure. Yes, Jesus came for everyone, but look at the concern that he has for one individual soul. This was Philip's God. This was Philip's Savior. Philip knew that God loved him, and he saw a manifestation of that love in Jesus himself. But Philip also knew that Jesus came for others. He came for everybody. So he goes to Nathanael, and he says, We have found the one Moses and the prophets have written about, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, we heard about, right? Can anything good come from Nazareth? So does Philip try to convince him? What does Philip say? Come and see. Judge for yourself. I'm thinking that's probably what Philip said. Judge for yourself. Have you ever felt like a number? Like a a nameless face in the crowd. You ever felt like, you know, really nobody cares. Nobody gets me. Nobody seems to, to understand. Nobody cares about my problems. My friends, come and see. Come and see the God who came to love us. He's the one that found Philip. He's the God that knew and cared where Nathaniel was sitting. He's the one that cared what was on Nathaniel's mind and what might have been weighing heavy on his heart. He's the Savior who forgives us, defends us, defeats the devil and death for us, and assures us that he personally loves us. And we see that no more than when we gather in God's house. We see that, taste that, feel that no more when we get an opportunity to receive that supper of his. He's the Savior that knows where you're sitting, who knows your thoughts, your fears, the apprehension that you have, the needs that you have. And he's the one that promises, I will bless you. I will bless you in every situation that you find yourself in. So I'm going to ask, what is the one thing, what's the one thing that is bothering you most this morning? Well, come and see the Son of God. Cast your anxiety on him. He says, because I care for you. This is the Son, the Son of God, who comes to each of his people with forgiveness and blessings and his love. This is the son that we too confess, like Philip and Nathaniel and Andrew and John and Peter and all the disciples, that we confess with confidence. When Nathaniel came and met Jesus face to face and heard what Jesus had to say, he said, 
Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. He knew and he understood. It was just like Philip had said. This was the savior promised by Moses and the other prophets. Nathaniel had no problem now confessing that faith that he had in this man because this man proved himself to be his savior. So with Nathaniel, we too boldly confess the son of God. We believe his promises. That's why you're here today. If any day we had, we said, we don't have to stay home. Well, I'm going to stay home today. No, why? You're here. And by your presence, you're boldly confessing your faith in him. You're here because you know he's the one that's washed away your sins. You're here because you believe he is with you every day, every minute of every day. You're here. Because you believe he's your king, who rules in your heart, who defeats your enemies, who provides for you, and who protects you. You're here to see the Son of God. What a wonderful thing it is for us to be able to, to confess with confidence and to believe in all these blessings that God gives to us. Yet Jesus says, you're going to see greater things than that. Friends, come and see the God that will bring us to heaven. Jesus reminded Nathaniel of the Old Testament account of Jacob and the dream that he had where he saw that ladder, remember, that stretched from, from heaven to earth, and the angels ascending and descending on that ladder. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Nathaniel, you'll see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus is the ladder. Jesus is that bridge between a sinless God and his sinful people. Through him, those sins are forgiven. Through him, heaven's doors are open. Nathaniel, you're going to see greater things than this. Philip would see heaven because of Jesus. Nathaniel would see heaven because of Jesus. You will see heaven because of Jesus. I will see heaven because of Jesus. People, anyone who believes in Jesus will see heaven because of him. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, as the writer to the Hebrews says. And with eyes focused on our eternal home, seeing what we see, knowing what we know, it can make even some of those more difficult days bearable. Because we have an opportunity to see through the, the crud. We have an opportunity to see through all of the temptations, all of the agony, all of the problems, to see heaven. Jesus sees us there right now. He sees us seated next to him. What a, what a glorious thing. We remember that he has each and every one of our individual situations. Again, you're not a face in the crowd. You're not a number. You are you to Jesus. And he is concerned about you. He knows all your troubles. He knows and he cares. He knows what tree you're sitting under, what rocky road you're walking down. And he promises to bless you and sustain you in every situation until you reach that heavenly home. Come and see. Come and see the Son of God, your Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep your hearts, your minds, your faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. For our confession of faith this morning, I invite you to turn to page 41 as we recite together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious life, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body.
Lord Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, give us vision to see the needs of your heavenly kingdom, and give us hearts filled with thankfulness that we will generously give and diligently labor to fulfill them. Accept this offering which we lay before you. Use it for the great work of preparing pastors and teachers for the ministry of the word, for supporting your servants who even now speak the divine message of love and redemption. We ask this in your name. Rise. This morning I invite you to turn to page 124, page 124 in the front of the hymnal, as we speak responsibly the prayer of the church for the season of Epiphany on page 124. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time, you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You ushered in the day of grace so long for all. Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. You brought the light of light to those walking in darkness and the joy of salvation. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Arouse us and our missionaries to flood the world with the light of your gospel. Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts, that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones, near and far, that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. Give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. Be gracious to all and lead us to reflect your love in everything we say and do. Hear us, Lord as we bring you our private petition. Finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the full light of your glory and with all your saints and angels sing the everlasting song of triumph. And it's in your name that we join and pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom,
continues on page 43. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look at you in this favor and give you his peace. questions if you have any or maybe hear some things as far as again what we're looking at always moving forward as a congregation that we can better take the message uh, to other people whether it's in Cannon Falls or wherever it might be so um, I hope you can stick around enjoy lunch uh, I'd say grab a cup of coffee uh, we said about 10 ish uh, but it's more like when the egg bakes are done uh, so uh, hang around you'll be out of here fairly quickly I think and we'll just enjoy each other's company and warm breakfast have a great week.